That the, will be the, the, CBI, the CBI seems to suggest that A, he is non-cooperative and B, that if he is allowed out, he could interfere possibly with the investigation given the fact Very that good. he is such a high-profile individual. Very important question. Just look at both your questions. And you will find the answers themselves, uh, Rajdeep. You're an intelligent journalist, come person dealing with law, and you'll catch the answers immediately. First point, uh, do you think that the meaning of interrogation is that I must go and admit my guilt? Is there a rule against self-incrimination? So if, if I go to you as investigating officer and you ask me questions and I say, look, I don't know or I don't want to answer, can you arrest me for that? That means that unless and until I admit my guilt, I'll be arrested. That is totally unknown to law, that, uh, that, that rule. Second thing is, why should you need to at all arrest a person who has for nine, uh, now it's just, uh, say about, almost just under a year, 10 months. There has been no evidence of interference of, with evidence, with physical witnesses. Most of the evidence is documentary. After 10 months or nine months in uh, March of uh, 2023, how can you possibly say that everything having been frozen, what can he interfere with? Everything is paperwork. So both those are fig leaves of arguments and they will be dealt with. Today, all that has happened is that the top court will not directly interfere. When we come up the ladder, I'm sure the top court, if necessary, will deal with it. Therefore, let me ask you, Dr. Singhvi, you started off by saying that there are issues concerning the political system as well that perhaps also need to be looked at. And one of those yes. issues, allegedly, is the fact that the process has become the punishment in this country, that particularly when you're an opposition leader, the ED and the uh, CBI acts in a manner that makes you, in a way, go through an extended jail sentence. Are no, those arguments that can be made? That's what about re? Then what about BJP leaders who, who get away and, 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 and AAP or Congress leaders who suffer? You made a similar argument at the Raipur plenary. Does that argument hold? Misuse of agencies cannot be an argument to suggest that the individual is not culpable. Not at all, Rajdeep. And I would appreciate if you give me a couple of minutes on a very important question you raised. It has nothing to do with Manish Sisodia. I made this point at the Raipur plenary in a speech in Hindi for almost 10 minutes. And I would like to explain this to you for your viewers to understand. It's a very nuanced and very important point. The point is this. Three facts stand out from 2014. You have published it. Newspapers have published it. There have been press conferences. Fact number one, the total number of cases in sheer numbers mm -hmm. where CBI and more importantly, ED prosecution has been initiated has jumped 100 times. 90 times, 80 times. So if it's 10 before, it's 1,000 now, post-2015 or 14. Second, 95, if not 98% of that number, the 1,000 number or the 900 number, involves opposition leaders across the political spectrum. Fact number three, in the rare cases where people who have been in the opposition and have switched and have had cases pending against them, but have switched sides, there is a whole list published by all of you in the journalist field. There has been the BJP laundering machine. Now, this is only fact. What is the legal conclusion from this, which is what I asked for at Raipur? Mm -hmm. And this has nothing to do with AP or party or party B. I said at Raipur that you need, you know, you will take time to come to a political coalition, which is ultimately the best way of dealing with Mr. Modi. And there has been now a call for a Congress-led coalition at Raipur. But before that, you should certainly have a legal coalition which raises this issue before the court in a properly constituted petition that, look, if you add up these three facts, it amounts to creating a non-level, uneven, non-level playing field, which is skewed. And that affects democracy directly. If you start singling out in a discriminatory, selective manner, only opposition leaders, that directly affects democracy. And if you affect democracy, you affect the basic structure. 